Good morning, good morning to all in the Marmy Army. It is Sunday the 4th of September. And uh, yes, you can see I'm here, yeah, yeah, I'm wearing my race garments. It is the day of the Cheltenham Half Marathon today. I've got a few more half marathons left this year, and this is start of the double header. I've got this one this week, and then Kenilworth the following week. I have a bit of a break, then I deal straight into Oxford, and then into beautiful Broadway, my hometown, my home village. Another reason why I'm really excited to be doing the Cheltenham half marathon. I have done it before is because uh, Cheltenham, actually joking aside, is where I went to university. Uh, never heard of uh, Cheltenham University. Well, you wouldn't. In those days, it was called Cheltenham and Gloucester College of Higher Education. It is now called the University of Gloucestershire. And um, if any of you students are thinking about going there, my advice is go through clearing. You can't polish a turd. My uh, campus was called Pittville, and it certainly was the pit. It was demolished in, uh, I had a quick look on the BBC website, in 2010 as the uh, teaching facilities, according to the, uh, the dean, were inadequate. Although um, that's not what they put in the prospectus in the 90s when they were persuading um, quite susceptible young people to uh, sign up. Uh, but, yeah, the one thing I am quite keen to do when I'm running around old shelters is seeing some old haunts. I'm particularly looking forward to going past my old favourite, Gas Nightclub. Any of my friends who are watching this will remember going down to the Gas. It was brilliant. Uh, not like these sort of like namby-pamby uh, nightclubs that you get now where the bouncers are there clicking to check capacity. There was no capacity. I doubt there was even a health and safety certificate, to be quite honest with you. It was an old house four stories high and the grunge factory was in the basement and that was where I used to be with my long hair. You could barely see in there due to the smoke. That's a real nightclub for you guys, a real night. Alexa, what happened to Gas Nightclub in Cheltenham? Here's something I found on the web. According to gloucestershirelive.co.uk, the club is believed to have been empty and boarded up before the blaze having been listed for demolition to make space for a little supermarket. So we're off to dear old shelters. I can't wait to get back there amongst some of the locals. I hate your students. I think you're so smart, don't you? Not particularly. Um, I'm also hoping to go past Wadden Road, which was the home ground of, uh, of Cheltenham FC, the Robins. Um, one game in particular stands out when we were playing against Sudbury Town in the Beza Homes League. And in those days, you could stand right behind the goal and everything you said could be, you could have a conversation with the goalkeeper, which I did one day, the Sudbury Town goalkeeper, who was a bit lippy. And uh, unbeknownst to him, at half time, he marched triumphantly off, thinking that that was the last he was going to see of us. But in those days, you could walk all the way around the ground and we were waiting for him behind the goal when he came back for the second half. I gave him a fairly forensic uh, examination of, uh, of my summation of his abilities as a goalkeeper from his handling, use of his area, kicking, uh, general demeanour and uh, the value that he clearly had to his teammates. Uh, he threatened to kick my head in at the end of the game so I made a sharp exit. I think as we are plummeting towards dear old shelters and starting to get into that West Country, it's as good a time as any for a West Country sing-along. Bruises on both my knees for you. Don't say please or thank you. I do what I want when I'm wanting to. My soul so cynical. So you're a tough guy, like it really rough guy. Just can't get enough guy. Chest always so puff guy. I'm that bad type. Make your mama sad type. Make your girlfriend mad type. Might suggest your dad type. I'm a bad guy. Dar. Uh, here I am 
in Chelters. You know, not just the home of Kate Thornton and BBC Breakfast's Charlie State, and of course Fred West, but also the home of the Jockey Club, Charlton Race Course. It is very busy here this morning, very busy indeed, which is what I don't like. And I'm desperate for the Kermit. Um, other news, got one of my wife's jummies on. This one's covered in stars and flowers. Um, and I was actually gonna bring it back. I don't think I'm gonna, I think this is gonna be a dump. Anyway, talking of dumps, let's get myself over to the uh, reception area. So here we are at Cheltenham Racecourse. And, and to be honest, quite surprised actually, uh, you just sort of consider Cheltenham Racecourse as somewhere that's used once a year for uh, corporate guests to come out and take recreational drugs, but no. Cheltenham Racecourse is used all year round. There's, I'm just outside the Princess Royal stand. Miserable looking stand, which probably figures. And uh, yeah, here I am. I think that's the Queen Mother's head over there uh, on a statue. And I'd very much like to go and pay tribute to her, even though I still haven't forgiven her for um, ruining the climax to the uh, Trevor and Little Mo story in EastEnders. She died and the whole telly was uh, ruined that weekend. Anyway, I'll let that go. But yeah, here we are. It's gonna be a big one, I think, this one. So here we are on the busy concourse, food market there called the Bear Grill. Look, I'd sue if I was in, to be honest. Still haven't found the toilets, starting to panic. There's loads of people here. You can't really see it at the moment, but there's a lot. And I'm kind of reminded of why I'm a miserable kid. Like they're all in fancy dress. I just want to get this done and go home, if I'm being completely honest. Um, it starts over there, it's going to be even worse over there, look. You've already got, like, groups of people doing warm-ups. It always flummoxes me. Why warm up half an hour before it starts? Tell you what, it is seriously busy. Who knew that people in the walls were so serious about their sport other than, you know, blood sports? Just coming up to the finish. I think about 1.30, 1.31. And there we go. Oh, there we go. Instantaneous. Thank and you very much. Come and join us back at the finish line where you've got the right. medal and there's a little brick wall there. It says the home of Jump Racing. That's, That's it. Track of the day. Do uh, you remember the first uh, time I pulled the poison on me in Chelsea? Prizes. Well, that was Cheltenham. I think I finished him at 1.31, which is good, I think. Not too bad. I saw some old haunts, didn't manage to get past the gas. Ran past one of my old houses, which was nice. Ran past the old video shop, now a pharmacy, go figure. And, uh, and yeah, and also won a very small victory by flicking the Vs at some people who were wrapping breakfast outside the Ivy, which, uh, again, I was running too fast for them to catch me. Not that they could have caught me in their uh, boat shoes. At one stage, there was a lady, and I, I made that sort of pun earlier about Fred West, because they were from this neck of the woods. And actually, I saw a woman who looked exactly the same as Rose West, who was stood outside the Texaco garage shouting, you've got this! And uh, first thing I did when I've just finished, I just have a quick Wikipedia. She's not out. Life means life. But look, that was Chelters. I'm gonna race home. On the way back from Chelters, and look, I, I've forgotten to report some successes 
actually. Uh, you know, I made a friend at the start, unobtrusive friend, just a very nice man. I'd love to think he'd be watching this because I did see him checking out my t-shirt unless he was looking at my boobs. But uh, yeah, he'd come to run the race with his sister. She'd got COVID, so he was on his own. He was from Hampshire, lovely chap. Uh, don't know how he got on to finish, but um, yeah, I left him in my dust. Uh, but yeah, one point of interest as well, another point of note which I don't know whether I should say this or not really, because it doesn't show me in a particularly good light. But um, for at least a couple of miles, there was this little fella who kept cutting me up. Like, so every time I moved to the middle of the road, he kept sort of like weaving over towards me and like leaning, almost like leaning into me, like cutting me off. And it didn't matter, he kept weaving in and out. It was all over the place. And at one stage, I was like, like this. Um, but he didn't really seem to pay much attention to it. And in the end, I just sort of let him go off ahead because to be fair, he was quite fast. Uh, and it was only actually when I was sort of running behind him a little way, I read the back of his jacket and he was running for um, a visual impairment charity. I'm just thanking the Lord that I didn't say anything. Uh, but you live and learn, you live and learn. Anyway, I will see you for the Kenilworth Half Marathon next week. Looking forward to it. Medieval.